Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are making another tier list video from Units of Rome Total War and today we are doing the mercenary unit roster and we are starting with cavalry mercenaries and as the first unit we have the Arab cavalry mercenaries and I think I will place them in B tier so they are Considering they are mercenaries, they are okay. Um, the Arab mercenaries are pretty fast. They uh, can be used in fights as well as uh, pursuing fleeing enemies. But uh, you cannot expect them to hold their own against, against decent enemy units. So that's basically the situation with all mercenaries. Their uh, real equivalent is better than the mercenary unit of them. So, the same applies to Barbarian Cavalry. It's kind of similar to that of the Arab Cavalry. And they are both as good or as bad as the other. Uh, so they will get a B tier as well. So, as I like to play the Julii most of the time, I will use the Barbarian Cavalry Mercenaries more. I think they are more easily available in larger region compared to that Arab Cavalry Mercenaries. Then we have these Camel Mercenaries and um, they are kind of similar to the Cavalry Mercenaries but they are a bit slower. They may be able to frighten enemy horses so it might be a bit easier to uh, run uh, to win a cavalry battle against the enemy but they are slower than the cavalry unit so that's why they get a place in C tier. Then we have the mercenary war elephants and I think they earn a place in A tier. That's mainly because most of the factions don't have elephants available in their roster, with a couple of exceptions, for example, Seleucids, uh, Carthage, maybe some others too. But uh, this is the only way to get elephants to some of the factions. They are dirty expensive, but in some battles the elephant's ability to break through the enemy formation might be worth the cost. So that's why they get A tier. But it's very difficult to get these war elephants. And that's why don't they don't get widely used, at least in my games. But I think they are A class unit. And then we have some Mason mercenaries. They are the better cavalry mercenaries. I think they are a weak A tier, most certainly better than these because they can handle themselves against uh, light enemy cavalry and expect to win. So they may actually be a decent unit, even though they are a bit more expensive than regular cavalry units. And then we move into infantry. First we have barbarian mercenaries. I use them a lot. They are widely available, but especially in late game, their weak morale most often distorts the battle more than the unit is beneficial. So they break too easily, especially in late game. Uh, in early game, I think they are a decent way to boost the army size or get some extra defenses to a city. So because of that, I think they are rather a weak B tier than strong C tier unit. Then we have Bastana mercenaries and they are quite expensive but their specialty is two hit points. So if they end up in a fight they can sustain the fight quite long before they start to take casualties and that also is a good thing for their morale. So, because they don't take the casualties that fast. So, because of this, I think they are strong B tier. 
but the ratio of costs and benefits of this unit is of course below the one that you can get from kind of real heavy infantry even with one hit point so that's why it that it doesn't get for example a tier then we have silician mercenaries or silician pirates and they have the nice ability same as legionaries and has that they throw a javelin before attacking and that's quite beneficial the bad thing for going for them is that they don't use proper formations so they are kind of clumped up and that leaves them vulnerable to cavalry charges especially from heavy cavalry but they are pretty decent units and their ability to throw the javelins before the melee actually happens gives them i think that gives them the b tier over the Bastan mercenaries because they are so much cheaper and i should state here that uh, this tier list is based on the campaign setting not the multiplayer or based solely on the stats of the units then we have eastern infantry they are kind of similar to barbarian mercenaries except worse they have more men but they break easier and they are pretty much useless in melee so basically when you might want to take them is that uh, is the situation where you desperately need some more garrisons to keep up the public order in a city or or some situation like that or you are very desperate to have more more troops for your army so because of that they get d tier almost any unit can beat eastern mercenaries in one-on-one -on -one battle then we have uh, mercenary hoplites they are pretty decent uh, they are the mercenary equivalent of hoplites and as such they can hold their own pretty well if their flanks are secured and because of that i think they are the strongest mercenary infantry of course in most cases i would prefer as a roman hastati or principes over these well maybe they could have their place in an army containing only hastati so maybe weak a or strong b for the mercenary hoplites i think mm, i think they get a strong b yeah they are not that good if if they were as good as the hoplites maybe their stats are but i think they have weaker morale than the real hoplites then they could have gotten a tier but now strong b then we have the uh the equivalent mercenaries of triari and uh, i think um, as triari are pretty bad they triari have strong morale going for them but the samnite mercenaries don't have even that so they are pretty weak against enemy infantry but since barbarian war bands are in b tier i don't like to get these into c tier but hmm they hold their own against cavalry pretty well but against infantry they they are not good so maybe strong c tier or maybe i should switch the places but let's leave them at that then we have ah i i will put these barbarian mercenaries to c tier as well then we have spanish mercenaries which are way better than barbarian mercenaries or samnite mercenaries they also throw javelin before charging so i think and they also use formation so i think they that will give them place in b tier and pretty solid place at that um, i think their ability to use formation puts them before the Cilician pirates and they are kind of pretty much equivalent to Scutari or Hastati 
from the faction rosters. And then as the last infantry unit we have Thracian mercenaries. They are pretty much similar to Bastanai mercenaries, even the image is the same, but Thracian mercenaries have only one hit point. And that makes them quite a lot of weaker, even though they are quite a bit cheaper as well. So they may be okay as a flanking force if they don't need to face the enemy directly. They can cause some decent damage, but on their own or to, in order to hold a line, I don't find them very reliable. So that's why they get a place in C tier because of their ability to do damage against armor. And then we move to missile cavalry. Missile cavalry is always nice, especially if they have bows. So first we have Bedouin archers and because of them riding camels, they are getting a place in B tier. So both of these cavalry units can run them down and as such they are able to evade enemy infantry, but not enemy cavalry. And that puts them behind these cavalry units here. If they had horses, I would put them in A tier. And then we have the uh, Numidian mercenaries. They have horses, but they are javelin throwing cavalry and as such they have a very limited number of missiles. And that's problematic because their melee abilities are pretty weak. So that's because of that they earn a place in C tier, even behind the camels, because they may they are able to outrun the camel uh, uh, mercenaries or camel warriors or whatever these are. But uh, eventually they will run out of their javelins, and after that it they will be an easy prey to these other riding mercenaries and they are not much good in melee either. Only thing going for them is that they are able to pursue the fleeing enemies, but not very useful. And then we have Scythian mercenaries, the real horse archers here, and that of course earns them a place in A tier. They are able to outrun uh, enemy cavalry, enemy infantry, and as missile cavalry or archer cavalry, they can do quite a decent damage from long range. They have a decent amount of missiles. So usually one unit of Scythian cavalry is able to take out one enemy unit and still be uh, usable in melee or, or has some missiles left and can be used in other ways as well. And then we move to Missile infantry. First we have Balearic Slingers. I think they are A tier. Uh, they have very good missile damage and that's uh, great. The only problem with Slingers is that they tend to fire in a straight line instead of using arches or shooting up while the missiles come down and that causes some problems when they are placed behind uh, infantry, because usually, especially if the enemy comes to close range, they will start hitting own units as well and actually do sometimes more damage to own infantry than to the enemy infantry. So you need to be careful when using them. But in front of the infantry, they perform really, really well. And... Um, they are able to hold their own against most uh, archer units, maybe excepting um, archer auxilia or Grecian archers or archer warband or pharaoh's guard archers. So those high tier archer units in regular roster. But, but uh, otherwise they are pretty decent and actually they can hold their own against light cavalry especially mercenary light cavalry or poor infantry units pretty decently. You cannot expect them to win, for example, Iberian infantry in one-on-one -on -one melee, but they can hold them back for a moment 
for your reinforcements to arrive. Then we have the Greece and Archers, absolutely S tier unit here. They have long range missiles, they cause uh, high damage, they have high missile damage, and they can uh, hold their own somewhat moderately in melee as well, so you can reinforce them. And they shoot quite fast, so that's a thing going for them as well. Uh, they are absolutely worth recruiting every time you have the opportunity to do so. They are better than the Archer Auxilia, they are better than uh, uh, likely the Faraus Archer Guard uh, and so on. So they are among the few mercenary units that should be recruited every time, even though they are a bit more expensive than the high tier archer units. Then we have Illyrian mercenaries. They are pretty similar to mercenary peltasts, into which we will get a bit later. They are javelin throwing missile units, and because of that they have quite limited number of missiles at their disposal. But at the same time they are quite tough, and I think these units might actually be able to beat, for example, Iberian infantry in melee. Or, and, or, or in situations where you have two hoplite phalanxes clashing each other, these units are pretty good to use as a flanking force. So they are able to hold their own in melee. And because of that, I think they get an A tier. Uh, they are maybe equivalent to heavy peltasts from Greek roster or maybe even a bit better than those. So that's why they get an A tier. Then we have another javelin mercenary, namely the Libyan mercenaries. And uh, they have kind of the similar situation to Illyrian mercenaries, but they don't have the benefits. They suck at melee and they they are not relay reliable, they have poor morale, so when they have used up their ammunition, they become pretty much useless. So I'm even a bit tempted to put them into D tier or weak C tier. Mm, they can be recruited uh, in pretty large area in Northern Africa. So that's one thing going for them. They are pretty cheap for mercenaries, but they are also pretty bad. Hmm. I think I will put them into strong D tier. I don't think they are... Maybe against elephants you might want to get them if you don't have any missile units of your own. Then they might be useful. But in most of the cases, almost any regular infantry or missile unit beats them. So you shouldn't recruit them except in very dire need. Then we have mercenary peltasts. They are pretty similar to Illyrian mercenaries. Uh, they have similar image, but they are not as robust as the Illyrian mercenaries. And because of that, they get a place in B tier. Illyrian mercenaries are better. And usually when you recruit Illyrian mercenaries, especially in Illyria, they get three bronze chevrons when you recruit them. And they pretty much cost a similar amount of compared to mercenary peltasts. So that's why mercenary peltasts get uh, B tier instead of the A tier of the Illyrian mercenaries. And then we have the Rhodian slingers. They have a similar image to that of the Balearic slingers and they have similar stats. And I think Balearic Slingers get some experience bonus when they are recruited. So that's why they get a higher A tier than the Rhodian Slingers. But Rhodian Slingers are good as well. And that's why they earn a place in A tier. 
So, this is my opinion of the uh, mercenary roster. Uh, what do you think? Uh, you can post your comments in the comment section, whether you agree or disagree. And uh, if you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That will help a great deal. And I think we will have some more tier list uh, videos coming shortly as we finish the Seleucate campaign. Have a great rest of the day. Quality Old Games, out.